Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to write uh, the graph y equals sine of negative x. So when we previously looked at y equals negative sine of x, what we saw was that a, um, a was negative 1. And so whenever we have a is less than 0, right? that means we're going to have a reflection over the x-axis. All right. So the exact same thing can be termed. So now we don't have a. Our a is positive in this case. But now you can see we have b is negative. So what that is now telling us is now we're not going to have a reflection over the x-axis. But now since our b is negative, so now since we have a negative inside the parentheses, now it's going to be a reflection over the y-axis. So to do this, what I'd like to do is graph the sine function. All right, now graphing the sine function, I'm going to graph the parent graph first. So y equals sine of x. And hopefully by this point, we should know how to graph the sine of x. We have an amplitude of 1. Um, we have a period 1, 2, 3, 4. We have a period of 2 pi and x scale of pi halves. OK, and the sine graph starts at 0, goes up to its maximum, intercept, minimum, maximum. So that is going to be sine of x. So now, if I am going to reflect that about the y-axis, all I'm simply going to do is now I'm just going to take all these points and like flip it over. So if this is over 1, up 1, now this is left 1. Or I'm sorry, over pi halves, up 1. Now it's left negative pi halves, up 1. Um, if here it's over pi 0, this is going to be left pi 0. Jeez. All right, and this is um, over 3 pi over 2 down. This is going to be left 3 over 2 down 1, and then back at my intercept. So therefore, um, if this graph continues, now as I reflect it, it's going to look like that. And if I was going to go in the opposite direction, it would be up like this, like that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You can see that the reflection of negative x is actually just like the reflection over the y-axis. But we can just kind of look at setting it up in a little bit different light. So we just take our function and just simply just take this graph and then reflect it over your y-axis. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Just remember, um, when a is negative, that's going to be reflection over the y-axis. And when it's negative inside the function, it's going to be reflective over uh, our a is negative, it's reflection over the x-axis. When it's negative inside the function, it's going to be reflexive um, over the y-axis. Thanks.